Good morning, gang. Welcome to The Walk Off. I'm Scott Belford. This is a Patreon exclusive series preview. It might not be the morning for you. I'm off in BC, so I'm on Pacific time right now, which lines up very well for this Blue Jays series against the Oakland Athletics. I know that the East Coasters out there, this is probably the afternoon. So good afternoon to everyone there. Now, we haven't put this little segment behind a paywall yet. We are doing a free preview for everybody. So we hope you enjoy the extra content. The Toronto Blue Jays, like I just mentioned, are off to the West Coast to take on the Oakland Athletics for three days. They finished up what would uh, be described as a pretty, I don't know what the best word is, heartbreaking series finale against the Rays where life kind of loomed a little larger than baseball this weekend and some bad luck sort of piled up for the Blue Jays after taking the first two games of that five-game series against the Tampa Bay Rays division rivals. Kevin Gosman wound up exiting the second inning of that first game of the doubleheader after being hit by a comebacker in the ankle. The good news is all of his tests came back negative. So Kevin Gosman shouldn't miss any time, or if he does, it should only be one start. Nothing structural has been damaged. The overall kind of uh, consensus is that it's a deep bone bruise and he should be good as long as he can kind of deal with the pain. So we'll see what happens there if he makes his next start Thursday against the Seattle Mariners. What really shook this team to the core and quite honestly the fan base myself included was the news of the tragic death of the 17 year old daughter of first base coach Mark Budzinski. Obviously we found something out was going on in the second game of that doubleheader when both him and Charlie Montoyo kind of exited the game. And then we found out yesterday that there was a death. Um, they said all the right things, the Blue Jays players, all of that. Let's win this for Bud. Let's go out there and get the W. But sometimes shit is just too heavy to overcome. And I think that was one of those situations. The boys just were not in that game yesterday. And it's really hard to blame them. Of course, anyone who has lost a family member or friend too soon knows exactly what this team is going through. So my heart, the walk off, uh, condolences, all of the fans out there I know are feeling this one. So all the best to the team and Mark Budzinski and the Budzinski family. So now they head out west to shake it off a little bit, three game series against the lowly Oakland Athletics who sit 26 and a half games back of the lead of the AL West. And our bottom line, one of the worst teams in baseball, you know what, scratch that, they are the worst team in baseball. So if you are the Blue Jays, you are hoping to go into Oakland and you're hoping to win this series. It really is a must-win series when you're playing a lowly team like the Athletics. And you know what? Pitching is lining up for the Jays to take at least two of three. Those matchups are, it is Manoa day to day. This young man continues to absolutely dominate his starts. And ERA just over two. He's going for his 10th win of the season. He's playing Cole Irvin who, uh, not playing, but I should say he's matching up against Cole Irvin of the A's, who's taking the bump for uh, for Oakland. Irvin is a... He's a slop-throwing lefty, I guess is the best way to put this. This is a dude with a pretty good curveball, a very good changeup. He controls his pitches well and hits his spots, but he has almost no velo he tops out at around 89 miles an hour and being that he's a lefty i think it's safe to say kevin biggio probably will have the day off as the jays send out their right-handed heavy lineup to do its thing and they should be able to hit this guy they just need to recognize the change up and lay off of it the changeup is a very good pitch for this man. So if they can sit on the fastball and recognize the curveball, this team should put up some runs. Tuesday, we see Yusei Kikuchi taking the mound versus Adrian Martinez. Now, Adrian Martinez for the Oakland Athletics. He is going into his third start here as a big leaguer. So he is just fresh off the farm. 
He has been hit hard in these first two appearances as a big league pitcher. So the Blue Jays need to try to get to that lack of confidence early if they can. Speaking of lack of confidence, Yusei Kikuchi was in a real struggle going into his last start and came up big against the Red Sox for the Blue Jays going six innings, allowing only one run, striking out eight, walking only one. He had a real bounce back outing in a time of need. There was no doubt that his back was against the wall. He had put the Blue Jays front office back against the wall. And who knows, had he really struggled, we may not be watching Yusei Kikuchi start today's game. What can we expect from Kikuchi? I don't fucking know, right? None of us know. It's a real roll of the dice. Is he going to be that dominant guy who just buries his left-handed fastball at 98 miles an hour in his spots? Or is he going to be the guy who just can't seem to find his control and get the teams out there to recognize his slider or slurve early? His slutter, I guess, is the way everyone's calling it. So we'll see what happens there. And then Jose Barrios takes the mound against James Caprillion. Now, Caprillion is probably the best pitcher of these three that this team is going to face, which isn't saying much as he has a 5.43 ERA and a FIP of over six. So his ERA is even uh, a little bit luck-based. This team really should take three, all three of these games. But that's not how baseball works. We should be grateful they're not facing the one really good pitcher on this team, Frankie Montes. So we'll see what happens. As for the rest of the team, the big news is that this is Matt Chapman's first time back to, uh, to Oakland after his big trade in the offseason. Of course, the Blue Jays moving Kevin Smith, Kirby Sneed, Zach Logue, and the top prospect in the deal, Gunnar Hoagland. For Matt Chapman, currently, if you're going to judge who won this trade, it is the Blue Jays. But time will tell. Gunnar Hoagland is still recovering from Tommy John's surgery. Of course, Matt Chapman has absolutely shored up the left-hand side of this infield for the Blue Jays. They are so much better defensively since his presence has been known, uh, made known. He is a vacuum at third base. He has improved bow at at shortstop and really has been just a gem in the clubhouse. You can really genuinely tell that these guys really like Chapman as a guy and really respect him as a ball player. All good things. Thought it would be fun before we wrap up this series preview to go over what our ex Blue Jays are doing. Kevin Smith, of course, started at third base for the Oakland Athletics at the beginning of this season, but he was unfortunately just sent down to AAA mid-June, uh, going down to the Las Vegas AAA club there, so that the Oakland Athletics could bring up their prospect, Jonah Bride. We're going to see Jonah Bride in this series this weekend. Before being demoted, Kevin Smith was good for a 0.2 wins above replacement. He was hitting an abysmal buck 80 on base percentage of 216, 42 strikeouts to seven walks and only two home runs. So he has not been very good. Fingers crossed he finds it in triple A. Kirby Sneed has been hit hard. He has an ERA of 7.36. Now his FIP, just a reminder, FIP of course is like ERA, but it takes out the defensive metrics and the park configurations and that sort of thing. So his FIP has been a five. So he has been a little bit unlucky, but that said, boy, oh boy, a seven ERA, lucky or unlucky, not very good. Definitely nothing does not look anything like what he did when he was pitching in the short stint he did with the Blue Jays. Friend of the show. He has made time for the walk-off three different times, so we do wish Kirby Sneed all the best in finding it, just not against the Blue Jays. Zach Logue was the other piece in this trade. Um, he has probably been the best pitcher of, or uh, the best piece so far for the Oakland Athletics out of this trade. He started strong putting up some good numbers in his first three or four starts with the with o with Oakland, but has fallen on hard times. He has an ERA of 5.27, a whip of 1.5, and has really suffered from a lack of offense from his team 
and just they are abysmal defensively and that has not helped him either. So that is the series preview for the Oakland Athletics versus the Toronto Blue Jays. Thank you so much for tuning in. Go Jays, go!